Let's take a look at the data we have from the Coulomb's Law Lab and see if we can find from this data a straight line graph and then from the straight line graph the charge on the two spheres. The first thing we need to do is we need to make a new set of data from our separations that are inverse square sets of data. And the reason again we're choosing an inverse square relationship here is because that's the relationship we see in Coulomb's Law. Okay, so this is an inverse square relationship. The other way we know this is when we look at the original set of data, when we graph that on our calculator, just electric force versus regular old separation, we get an inverse square shape, which looks kind of like that. So two reasons that we know we're going to need to take our R values and then inverse square them to make our straight line graph. So here's where I'm gonna put the data. I'm gonna call it R to the negative two, which is how we inverse square something. You could also put, if you wanted to, one over R squared, but R to the negative two is a little easier. And I'm gonna put the units that this will come out in as meters to the negative two. Now what I will do on each of my separations is in my calculator, go and put them to the power of negative two. So I'll write out for the first one what I did, 0 0.41 meters to the power of negative two will give me a new value that I'm going to graph of uh, 5.9. And that'll be meters to the negative two for its unit. Now I'll quickly go through and just do the rest. I'm keeping my sig digs consistent as I go. Your data very likely will look different from mine um, because we didn't collect the same data and that's totally fine. And I had a couple of quite large r to the negative two values at the bottom, so I used scientific notation. This one was 400. My bottom one was 10,000. So we got very, very close together. Now I'm going to take these values and I'm going to graph them on a new graph on the next page. I am going to make my r to the power of negative two values the x of the graph. And I'm going to take my electric force values and make them the y. I'm going to graph on the graphing calculator. When we do this, X is going to be list one, L1 on your calculator, and Y is going to be L2. And this is my reminder to you that the steps we're going through in doing this are in your lab manual. So although I'm going to go through this pretty quickly, you can use the lab manual to help you out with the steps to make a graph in your calculator. So this is L1 that I'm filling in right now. And I'm putting in here all of the, the values of r to the negative two, my x values. And then I'm gonna put in all of my forces. It's important that when I'm putting in, for example, these forces, which are in scientific notation, don't forget to put the scientific notation part. So I'm remembering to put in the power of negative three for each of these. And a good little thing to check is just that you entered all your data into your calculator properly. So my data is in my calculator. What I'll do now is I'll press the window button and I wanna pick a good window setting here. So my X values on my graph are going to be all of these X to the negative ones. And they're, uh, pardon me, R to the negative two values. And they're really quite a, a big spread. So I think my smallest one is 5.9. So if maybe for my X minimum, zero is fine. But my biggest one is 10,000. So maybe I'll go to like, I don't know, 11,000 as my maximum. Maybe I'll go up by thousands because I've got quite a bit of data to fit in there on the X. You can have different window settings based on what your data looked like. For my Y values, uh, I think zero is a good starting place. My biggest one looks like it's gonna be about four. 0.1 times 10 to the negative three. 
So maybe I'll use for my x maximum 5 times 10 to the negative 3. I want something just a little bit bigger than my biggest point. And perhaps my scale, I'll go up by 1 times 10 to the negative 3. Once I have the data entered into the stat plot menu, and I have my window setting set, I just press the Y equals button and I make sure that plot 1 is shaded in. If it looks like this where it's not shaded in, just scroll up to plot 1, hit enter in your calculator, and when plot 1 is shaded in, the data will show up. And really, other than that one point, this is actually some fairly linear data at the start. That one point out towards the end is maybe a little more out to lunch. But that's okay. It is, a, it is a tricky lab to collect data for. I'm going to get the slope of this graph by pressing stat. I'm going to go over one to calculate. And I'm going to go down to linear regression. I hit enter on linreg. I've got an older calculator, so once I have that program on the screen, I hit enter once and it works out the slope for me. You might have to enter it, uh, press enter three or four times on a newer calculator. And I get a slope of 2.5 times 10 to the negative 7. The advantage of graphing in your calculator is you really don't need to spend quite as much time sketching your graph. This is all I'm looking for, is a title. Electric force versus separation to the power of negative 2. Here's an x axis, uh, pardon me, a y axis label. So the y axis is electric force in newtons. Here's an x axis label, r to the negative 2 in meters to the negative 2. Maybe we'll put down sort of what our window settings were. So I think I went between 0 and 11,000 between 0 and 1.5 times 10 to the negative 3. And then I just sort of sketch out what did my data roughly look like. So I had a bunch sort of at the beginning. I had one piece way over there. And I just draw a very primitive line of best fit. And I'll just label it with its slope. So from my calculator, the slope value was 2.48. So I want two sig digs, 2.5 times 10 to the negative 7. Your lab manual actually has a spot for you to do your slope calculation, but we did it on the calculator, so there's no need to actually fill in any work there. I'll just write the slope down again because it's kind of convenient. The units of the slope are newtons over meters to the power of negative 2 because the slope is rise, which is measured in newtons, over run, which is measured in meters to the negative 2. And you can simplify that unit down. A newton per meter to the negative 2 is the same as a newton meter squared. Now we're nearly done. I need to take my slope, and I'm going to somehow from that slope work out what the charge is on the two spheres that created this data. And there's two steps to doing that. The first step is to think about what the slope actually represents. Slope is rise over run. So the rise of the graph is electric force. That's the y value on that graph. The run of the graph is r to the negative 2, inverse square of the separations which, just like the units, can sep uh, simplify down to electric force times r squared. So this is what the slope is actually equivalent to. Kind of like the slope of a displacement versus time graph gives velocity, or the slope of a force versus uh, amplitude graph back in, in physics 20 gave spring constant. Here, the slope of a force versus inverse square of separation graph uh, gives force times separation squared. So that's sort of my first step that I'm doing in this analysis. The second step that I'm going to do is I'm going to manipulate the formula which ties all this data together, the electric force formula, Coulomb's law, and I'm going to manipulate it so that I can get the same little piece of algebra that I had from my slope. And it's actually not too bad to manipulate. It's even a e little easier than the momentum lab we did. I multiply both sides by r squared. 
And what I end up with here on the left-hand side is electric force times separation squared equals KQ1, Q2. Well, Q1 and Q2 are the same in this lab. They have the same amount of charge. So I can call that Q squared. Now, the reason I changed the formula and put electric force and R squared next to each other is because I know that electric force times R squared is the same as the slope. So I can put in place of electric force times R squared the slope of my graph, which was 2.5 times 10 to the negative 7 Newton meters squared. That equals K, which is Coulomb's constant, or the electrostatic constant, 8.99 times 10 to the 9 Newton meters squared per Coulomb squared multiplied by the unknown charge that I'm looking for, squared. Out comes the calculator. We're going to divide these two to see what we get. And then we're going to square root them. So I'm getting to two sig digs, 5.3 times 10 to the negative 9 coulombs for the charge in either one of those pith balls. And if you recall, when we did our hypothesis in this lab, we said that our hypothesis was the charge would be somewhere between a microcoulomb and a nanocoulomb. So this is 5.3 nanocoulombs, which is actually a pretty realistic amount of charge for one of those tiny little spheres to be.